Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our third live Q and A of CEO 2020. And today we're here to talk about everything got to do with um, business and hospitality courses at AIT. And very shortly, we're going to be joined by uh, the dean of faculty of business and hospitality, Michelle McKeown Bennett, and Michelle will be on hand. For the next half hour or so to answer all questions in relation to uh, work placements, uh, live projects, jobs of the future and so much more. Um, just to reiterate our message, I suppose over the last number of uh, live Q&As that we've been running uh, as part of CEO 2020, um, although our campus is closed, we are still uh, very much in operation and we're here to help students during these difficult times. Um, we are here um, to give you as much guidance as possible. So if you have any questions in relation to courses, entry requirements, uh, whatever it might be, just send us a direct message. We've been getting loads of messages over the last couple of weeks in relation to courses so send us a message and at least then we can open up that channel of communication and we can keep in touch with you over the course of these couple of months and um, so without further ado I'm going to um, get Michelle involved in the live broadcast so if you can bear with me a moment and just when we're Michelle to come true um, just to, again to highlight that today is about business and hospitality um, a very prestigious faculty within uh, our institute and uh, there we are hi Michelle how are you this morning hi Dan hi everybody how are you good Michelle thanks a million for joining us this morning we really appreciate it um, as I've just mentioned before you came on um, although this is a very difficult time um, we're opening up this uh, opportunity to try and encourage students to ask as many questions as possible um, in relation to business and hospitality degrees at AIT. Lovely. Okay, so before uh, we kind of before we get into the questions that have come through over the weekend, Michelle, can you give us a little bit of an introduction into um, the Faculty of Business and Hospitality at AIT? What, what's it all about? Okay, uh, well, I suppose, um, first and foremost, um, we are one of four faculties within the Institute and we focus on the business, the business computing, uh, accountancy and the hospitality, which includes hospitality, um, culinary arts, sports, uh, recreation management, tourism management. Um, so I suppose from a perspective of the business side, we're really looking at the service industries, we're looking at support industries, uh, looking at businesses um, that relate to financial management, uh, banking, finance. So uh, preparing people for the uh, employment in areas across the world that all drive economies effectively uh, and support uh, companies in driving economies. Excellent, excellent. And in terms of the, the faculty, um, I know as a, as a graduate, I, gra I graduated in 2012 from the Faculty of Business with a master's degree in business. And an excellent graduate you are. <laughs> um, I know firsthand that the supports that are there in place for students are very, very strong. And they offer, yeah. you know, in terms of that one-to-one -one, uh, lecture student experience is very, very good. Um, can you talk us a little bit about that in terms of students listening this morning, to give them a little bit of a, I suppose, encouraging sign that when they come to college, the supports are very much in place in terms of student supports and lecture supports? Absolutely, Jan. Uh, I think the most important um, thing to, to tell uh, potential students is that from the moment you walk in the door, all right, we're very aware of your needs and the supports that you need. Everyone is different and everyone learns differently and everyone needs uh, a little bit more help and, and or a little bit less help. And we, what we do is we help you identify your learning style. And everyone, um, you know, is unique, and but we're able to actually support you in that. So the first week in, the college has a student support services, um, a group that literally um, teach you how to get used to the college. Even the first thing you don't, you know, we don't hand you a book and say start. We bring you in. We show you what the family of AIT is. And the family incorporates yourselves as well, you as, as, as students. So it's showing you what college life is going to be about. It's giving you the confidence to be able to say, yeah, I'm going to be able to start here, succeed here and come out with the qualification that I want. So support services would include, you know, 
uh, just getting you ready for campus, uh, making sure your accommodation is okay. Uh, there's student ambassadors there so that if, from a perspective of your subjects, that if uh, you are unsure of a subject, they can uh, con uh, you know, reassure you to say, listen, this is how it's going to be. Um, so it's not just the lecturers that are going to be there for you and the, and the student supports, it's the actual students like Dan when he was a gra a, a, an undergraduate. Is, helping you get there and helping having someone to talk to and that is the most important thing about college everyone is nervous everyone is fearful it's removing the fear factor yeah. you know we're a very we're a very successful faculty we've you know over 1400 students in the faculty and a thousand of them are undergrad or, are full-time and uh, 400 and something are part-time so we have part-time learners as well that some of them don't even, aren't even on the campus but we're able to support them through online delivery and we're also able to support you through tutorials so we have two very uh, particular tutorial groups that uh, you can actually go to on top of your class if you get confused so there's no issues there support wise yes yeah, there's um yeah there's just technology i think done as well that's the, the techno assistive technology side so if anyone requires um particular assistance in using um um technology or maybe learning enhancement we have, have facilities to do that too okay excellent and when you look at the faculty as uh, it's broken up into the three departments um yes you've got your department of business and management you've got a department of um uh, accounting and 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 business computing and then the department of um hospitality tourism and leisure across those three departments you've got an opportunity to study your straight level eight honors degree programs but you also have the opportunity to come in at level six or level seven as well um can you yes talk a little bit about the offerings that are there in place in terms of yeah right across the board Absolutely. So the ladder system, uh, which um, you may not be familiar with, uh, is a system whereby you don't not automatically come in on a four year program. And it, it, you, the option is there for you to choose. You can choose to come in on a level six or level seven. And what that allows you to do is to uh, get a two year or a three year qualification. Uh, in some cases, you can come in on the two year, you progress into the three year qualification, which would be your degree. And then you can progress on to the fourth year honours degree program and onwards, up right up to PhD. So the 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 uh, difference is that you know you between a four year honours degree program and a higher certificate or an ordinary degree program is that it's just a duration, but it does not mean that you don't come out with an honours degree or or a postgraduate qualification. It's just a different entry route, and it's to allow people options to come in do two years and then maybe you know go out and work for a year and come back the following year. It's just more opportunity than anything. Yeah, great. And we know for, obviously this is a difficult time that students can't come to our campus to have a look around. Yes. Um, as I mentioned yes. in the previous live Q&As, um, this time of year, um, myself and Claire in the office will be very, very busy with, um, with campus tours, campus with tour, uh, yeah. parents coming in to look around, maybe students sitting in some classes. But we, we're, we're unfortunately not in that position this year. Um, for the students that can't make it down to have a look around, can you talk to us a little bit about the facilities that are in place for uh, business students and also for hospitality students as well? Absolutely, absolutely. So we have our own uh, lecture wing, I'll call it. You know, it's a whole area that is dedicated just to the business uh, accountancy and um, business computing and the hospitality students. The hospitality students actually have their own building. It's a state-of-the-art building uh, that showcases um, you know, everything to do with culinary uh, arts, uh, tourism, uh, hospitality. Uh, there are five uh, state-of-the-art kitchens there. We have a restaurant and bar area. Uh, we have internationally recognized um, lecturers who have in their previous um, employment would have been, you know, Michelin star chefs, for example. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, the level of facility and the level of, of expertise available, which is also important, facilities is one thing, the expertise available is essential because we're dealing with people who have been out in industry. We're dealing with people who have experience who know what a graduate needs when going into employment and they're able to 
give those uh, students and the, the, the requirements and the skills that they need. The business uh, wing is um, has state of the art technology, for example. Um, there's a lot of, uh, from the business computing perspective, a lot of software that they would need is there, especially say, for example, digital marketing, the whole um, web design media uh, software. It's just, uh, you know, it's state of the art and it, it's amazing what the students are able to do when they get into it and see, um, you know, what's possible. Yeah, and that's great because um, I was speaking to Tony Johnson and Tony is the head of the Department of Hospitality, Tourism and Leisure and Tony mentioned that he's going to come on very shortly and do another live Q&A on Instagram in relation to that whole space. So if anyone's listening this morning that has an interest in the areas of hospitality, tourism and leisure, it's a good opportunity to come on and listen to Tony in the near future in that space as well. Um, progression past undergrad, I know it's, it's a long way away for a Leaving Cert student or a QQI or a mature student looking yeah. to enter into third level uh, at undergrad level in September. Um, but the opportunity within the Faculty of Business and Hospitality is there to progress past undergrad, as you mentioned, onto level nine and level 10 uh, at master's and PhD. Can you give us a little bit of an indication of what's there in place um, after? Yes. That? Absolutely. So, okay, there's two types of progression available. Okay, so the first would be a taught uh, level nine master's program. Okay, now we currently have uh, master's programs, uh, taught level master's programs in data analytics from the business computing side of it, um, master's in accounting and a master's in business. All right. We also are developing other progression routes uh, by research there as well. So people can actually do um, a master's, uh, which would be a two year master's as opposed to a one year taught uh, program, which I just briefly mentioned earlier, but also the two-year master's or maybe three-year to four-year PhD program, which is by research. And this would be taking a particular topic that may be novel. It may be something that industry has, is looking for because a lot of our projects and a lot of our research will be done along with our industry significant amount. Okay, what does this mean? It means that we are actually um, working on, um, say, I, I do call it frontier. We're looking at frontier investigation. That means that when you come out with that master's or PhD, you're the expert, and therefore employment employers and industry want you. You might decide. I've decided I'm after designing something, I'm going to become my own employer. And we prepare you for that as well in entrepreneurial uh, studies. You know, so there's options after that from the from the perspective of of, of your postgraduate qualification. Okay, okay. And just move it across then into I know, for example, um that the the faculty of business hospitality prides itself very much on live projects. Um, yes. And for example, um, the digital marketing students last year undergone, uh, underwent a very, very um, uh, extensive live project. And there were some really, really good uh, industry connection pieces there. Um, one in particular with uh, Robbie Henshaw and, and Henshaw mm -hmm. Iwer. Um, in terms of, the, of the, um, the live projects that are there for students, how can they benefit students coming through undergrad um, moving into the space of employment once they graduate? I suppose the first thing is, is that they're an immersive experience, okay, with employers. So it's uh, it's what we call a capstone project, okay? It literally is putting the, the, the lid on their degree program, their honours degree program, and it allows them to showcase what they've learned over not just fourth year, but the, the whole four years of their program of study, and then apply that in an industry setting. They literally will go for the, for the entire year, work uh, hand in hand with an, a, a, a particular industry member. For example, McGargle's beer, all right? They wanted to do a new marketing campaign for a new brand of beer. I mean, and this is nationwide. And just to highlight, I mean, we had 70 employers apply to to take, we had a, um, it was our first year of the level eight program. So we had, I think it was a 12 students come out um, in that program. And we had 70 employers looking to take those 12 students. I think that in itself is a, is a plus for the program, but also to the style of capstone project. So how is it benefiting? It gives you a, um, a first-hand experience of what it is to work with an employer before you actually go on employment. So when you go to an, to an interview, you already know now what, the industry and what the employer is looking for there you, you know you're a better awareness of what it means to work work for a living and work for a product so therefore you're you're more aware 
of um, the impacts that um, companies face when they're trying to develop new new projects and new products. So it, it's it's very very important that skill set you won't get it in any other format. Brilliant. And leading to careers, then we know that the Faculty of Business and Hospitality, right across all the three faculties um, in AIT at undergrad, um, have very very strong and high uh, graduate employability rates when they when they go yeah. through undergrad. There's always a very high percentage of graduates that find career, uh, jobs very soon after they graduate. Um, in terms of careers and future careers, um, for anybody that's listening this morning or watching this morning that's interested in pursuing a degree in any of the areas under the Faculty of Business and Hospitality, um, what future careers can you see you know, popping up over the next number of mm. years that students can get excited about? Well, okay, so we'll take um, the, the, how the world changes from, from a perspective of, of um, crisis like the COVID-19, all right? There's companies that are um, having to diversify. The skill set that we give, I just take, say, business and management, for example. Financial management is one of the areas, you know, that they can go into. Business management, human resources, looking at economics. So there's, there's jobs are financing and banking. So they're going to be absolutely essential for rebuilding economies after this crisis, all right? And the stu our graduates coming out of both the uh, accounting and business computing and the uh, business and management um, uh, departments will actually be able to address those uh, employ employability needs, all right? So um, I suppose from a perspective of the accountancy, you know, setting up either their own accountancy firms or going into the big four, like, uh, you know, you've RBK, you've Deloitte, you have um, uh, PricewaterCooper, okay, PricewaterhouseCooper. So, the, you know, there's the big, big companies that are always looking for our graduates and they do employ them. And then you've the smaller companies, you've Teleflex, et cetera. Um, you also have... Um, from the perspective then of uh, the hospitality, tourism and leisure, uh, a lot of the um, tourism um, um, sites, like the big hotels, like the So Hotel groups, uh, Radisson, the O'Sullivan groups, which have the Sheraton and Athlone, for example, they are going to need people from Ireland to actually you know, um, meet their needs. Okay, it's going to be harder to for 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 people to travel in, for example, uh, to Ireland in the current crisis in the next couple of months and maybe possibly years. So they're going to be looking for the Irish graduates that are able to do customer uh, relations. You know, they have great customer relations that are able to actually communicate very well um that communicate literally as well it's not just about being able to speak but can you write correctly so all of these you know you're talking about um you know general managers you're talking about the uh, health uh, center managers within the hotels as well you're talking about um you know the human resources side the financial side in hotels so you know we're talking we're, all our graduates will be at some stage you know they're going to um, be able to manage a particular uh, area within a business and uh, to ensure that it is cost effective to ensure it's profitable to ensure that it is successful in order to keep the long longevity yeah. of the company going you know one of the big things as well is that um, you know from an international perspective our students you know already get international placement um, all over the world yeah. Okay, we're talking about Australia, Abu Dhabi, the US, even in Europe, you know, France, Belgium, we have a very uh, good connection with um, uh, universities in Europe through, um, uh, I suppose, uh, Erasmus exchange programs. We also have a new uh, alliance now. We're in the RUN network, which is the regional university network, GEU funded network, which, in, which um, promotes mobility. So we will be able to offer our students various different options of skill set training uh, and also, um, I suppose, placement and uh, exchange so they can actually spend some of their time uh, outside in, in Europe, in Hungary, in Finland, in the Netherlands, in Austria, in, in Portugal, all right, to complete some of their programs. What does that do? It gives you a bigger insight as to what Europe is about or what, you know, the world and, and how the world interacts. So it gives you an additional skill set of communication skills as well as everything else, you know, so it prepares you a little bit better. Okay, excellent. And you talked there about work placements and the value um, and the, um, 
the contribution that a work placement can add to um, add to a degree is 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 very very it's very high. And uh, I suppose looking at the value of a work placement when you come out of college, it gives you that industry ready experience. You come out with with a bit more um, uh, than just a degree. You have that uh, bit of experience as well that you can add um, to uh, to your profile as well. So moving on, Michelle, just to some of the questions. We got loads of questions in over the weekend. Yeah. Um, in relation to courses that fall under this faculty. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the questions. And if we don't get through all of the questions, as we've mentioned in the previous live Q&As, um, just send us a direct message on Facebook or Instagram uh, or send an email to ask us at AIT.ie and we'll come back to you straight away after this because we only have, we're, we're limited with time, but we'll try and get to as many questions as we can this morning. So first of all, Sophie sent in a message uh, over the weekend and she wants to know what type of work placements does a student undertake if they study a general degree in business? Okay, so the work placement, um, uh, Sophie, it's a 20-week work placement and um, the you know, the specific recruitment roles can be one of them. So you'll be put into the HR um, side of the, the business. You could be put into the finance side, payroll. You could be put into, you know, doing auditing. So from a tax perspective, it's important that companies are able to ensure that they're they're up to date with their taxes, et cetera, and their returns. So from a perspective of uh, that type of work placement, all right, um, you know, you can go into companies such as the Russell Brent Keane, DPD, we have people in on post insurance, which so the insurance side of it, um, credit unions, uh, recruitment agencies such as Matrix Recruitment, um, you know, and then healthcare groups. So healthcare obviously would have a significant back office uh, supports as well. So, yeah, you're, you're going to be given experience, I suppose, all in managing, finance, um, recruitment, um, the, um, I suppose, operations. So, you know, general making sure that any operational issues that you're doing or the projects that people are, so project management, that's what they'll be expected to do. Yeah. And business really is a broad church discipline. You can, you can go into it various uh, different avenues you mentioned yourself, but are, so if you study a, a, a degree in business, you can, and this is what I did. So it gives you an opportunity to go down and study the likes of whether you want to go down the route of economics or marketing yep. or digital marketing, marketing or management or HR. It gives you a yep. very uh, open road to try and uh, figure out which way you want to go with it. So uh, a degree in business opens up a lot of different doors. So, um, and, yes, again, it does. And, you, and you can decide whatever work placement you want to go on to kind of fit the direction you want to take that degree with. Um, yeah. Okay, moving on, Keen wants to know um, business and law. He's interested in business yeah. and law. And he wants to yeah. know um, how many points approximately will business and law come in at this year? Now, so let's address points. This year is going to be slightly different, all right, we expect because of the COVID-19, all right. Uh, but I would say if you aim for uh, roughly where it was last year, around 300 points, okay, you know, you're not going too far wrong there. OK, uh, our median point, which would be the, the midpoint of, of the group that we took in, was 357. So, you know, it's it's not that much higher. So if you aim around the 300, I think you'd be safe. Yeah. And just I suppose to mention the Keen as well, that points are we, we, we don't just uh, decide what yeah. points are going to be. Points yeah. are purely uh, determined on demand for the course. Um, if the demand goes up, the points go up, and if the demand goes down, the points go down. So it's, yeah. it, it's a demand-driven uh, area. And actually, with that in mind, um, I mm. want to mention about um, I'm going to be doing a live vod or a vodcast tomorrow with Nari O'Callaghan, and Nari is our admissions officer. And Nari is going to go through the process of entry requirements, points. So it's definitely worth checking that out on our CEO hub after um, uh, after tomorrow. Um, next question in relation to uh, again business and law. Can mm -hmm. you become a lawyer by studying business and law? You can, yes, you can become a solicitor, but they, we, you will be doing modules that are linked to law, so tort law, um, uh, EU law, etc. Um, and uh, what it is then is that you can get exemptions for some of the of the examinations that you're required to do by the Law Society of Ireland in order to become a solicitor. And then you will do the, the remainder, the outstanding, once you've finished your course with us, you do the, the outstanding ones then with the Law Society of Ireland. But yes, you can, after that, become a solicitor. And many of our students have already. Brilliant, brilliant. You know, we are also looking at extending those, exam uh, those exemptions by taking on more law modules at the moment. So hopefully by uh, September, the following year into second year where it matters is, is you actually have that option as well. 
Great, great. And moving then into accountancy, um, yes. a, a course that has a very long standing um, uh, reputation with AIT. It goes back a long time. A uh, long way. And in uh, Ireland, yeah. highly recognised in Ireland. Yeah, and uh, I know they, the guys in accounting done a great job over the years in AIT, propping it up to the level it is at today. And again, it's a very good career to take a look at, a very long standing career. In terms of the, um, the accountancy degree, do you need to study accounting um, for the Leaving Cert to be eligible to go into study accounting in AIT? No, uh, if you don't. Now, if you do it, it's obviously beneficial. But we, we try to, uh, to uh, take the line that, you know, there's going to be a certain percentage of people who uh, entered the course who don't ha have accountancy done. So we bring everyone, we start everyone at a, at a standard line and bring everyone up through the actual academic year and build up your knowledge until we we get everyone to the same level of understanding. So no, but uh, again, you know, that's the same for every programme, all right? We don't have uh, programme-specific modules, okay? Uh, there are the general entry requirements and they're all on the, the our, our um our prospectus or the handbook that you can look at. But no, we don't try and, and set individual particular um, uh, uh, module requirements uh, just to give people uh, the options. OK, OK. Uh, and just, just to also highlight that um, there's a very good video on our YouTube channel from um, a lady, a graduate from the accounting degree, uh, Joy Salaja. And Joy talks to us about uh, graduating from AIT with an accounting degree. She's now working with uh, one of the big four based in London, has a great, great job. Yeah. Um, and she talked about how accounting can open up, uh, again, a wide range of careers, not just in uh, working in, in the accountancy sector, working in various aspects of business. So again, if you're interested in accounting, uh, go onto our YouTube channel and check out that page, uh, check out that video. Um, the next question is in relation to digital marketing. Very popular yeah. program. I know Ashling and Louise and, and the staff there have done a great job getting that up to the standard is that now. Um, in relation to digital marketing, what types of careers can you get from studying digital marketing? Okay, so you're talking about digital managers, uh, web designers. Uh, you're talking about uh, social media uh, marketing campaigns, event management campaigns. So you're you're dealing with, uh, I suppose, all of the uh, online, the, the the even the the digital, the social marketing aspects. Not, it's not just having a flashy web page. It's actually how to communicate through the various different platforms. So you're talking, about, as I said, the web designers. Um, the uh, social media manager uh, marketing uh, campaigns from that perspective, you know, age group based, the whole lot. Okay, okay. Moving then on to uh, one of the new courses, Business Information Systems. Um, yes. I know Trevor's been working on that program. Um, what, what type of job can you get if you graduate from business information systems? So what we're talking about there is, you're talking about uh, business processing, all right? Or data processing, for example, as well. So you're talking about communications, data, uh, technology, all within the business. So every company nowadays, if you think about what you're even doing in school, Technology is at the heart of everything, but from a from a business perspective, that's doing finances, that's doing payroll, and all of that. The business computing is at the heart of that. All right, uh, but there's also believe that digital marketing is part of that. All right, so again, you're looking at web designers, data analytics uh, is a huge area now. Big data, it's all about handling the information that you gather and what to do with that, and how can you actually use that to improve your company. So looking at the, the you know data analysts is also part of that. Now I will say the business information systems degree program is uh, may um, we're still reviewing as to whether we will launch it fully on September or not so just keep keep uh, we'll keep you posted on that all right um, you know based on the current situation we might decide to hold off till the following September but in saying that do keep you know come to us before you make a decision as to whether to take it off your options or not okay and just in relation to then culinary arts, um, I know it's, 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 it's a bit lot different from business information systems, but a question has just popped in about culinary arts and yes. um, it's from Kelly and she wants to know, um, she said she really enjoys home economics in school. It's one of her favorite subjects. Is there similarities between home economics and culinary arts uh, or can she draw line between the two courses uh, to try and maybe continue her, her love in that space and, and pursue it in the third level? 
Absolutely. I mean, there it's very, very similar. You know, it's you, it, an awful lot of the experiences that the student uh, gets from home economics, they'll carry forward into the culinary arts program because not only are you learning all about the, the, the food development side of it, but you're, again, you're dealing with the economic uh, support side. So you will learn a lot about costings, you'll learn about health and safety, uh, you know, you'll learn about communications. So all of that that you learn in leaving surgeon home economics is very very um, positive to bring forward into culinary you're going to love it um really kelly you know so i would recommend that would be exactly where you want to go and where you need to go yeah and finally then michelle is in relation to um i know tony johnson in htl does a lot of hard work on field trips every year and we had a question over the weekend asking about yeah, um, you know, we, we, we've seen Tony bring students across to um, to parts of China, to um, uh, Dubai, um, Singapore most recently. Um, can, can all students get involved in these trips or how do you come about getting involved in those trips? Absolutely. Effectively, um, any student in HDL excuse me, <clears throat> can actually go on these trips. Now, uh, you do, there is a there is a payment option to it. It is based as well on academic standing. So it's very, very important that people keep up with their studies, that they attend their classes, uh, that they, you know, they follow the guidelines of the lectures and get their assignments in. And once their academic standing is good, they can apply to go on these trips. Now, it costs around a thousand euros a year and you can pay for that um, over the period of the, of the year. And usually at the end of the academic year, then the students get to travel. Now they've been to ever amazing, amazing places: Abu Dhabi, China, Malaysia, you know, um, the UK, uh, USA. Uh, I think was one of the uh, areas they want to go to. Russia uh, is another area. So you know, it's just the world is there. There, there's no limit to, to where they can go. Yeah, yeah, great. it's great. very, very, very good. I'd love to go with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so would I. Um, okay, Michelle, listen, thank we've run out of time. Thanks a million for coming on this morning. And we really appreciate it. And for anybody that still has a question uh, that we haven't got to this morning, mm-hmm. as I mentioned, just send us a direct message on this and we can, I can put you in touch with Michelle or with some of our staff within the Faculty of Business and Hospitality. Um, and also to mention to check out our CEO hub, ait.ie forward slash CEO hub. We're going to be launching a new podcast series this week. Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking to Ashlyn Keenan from the Digital Marketing Course. Um, and we're going to be talking to lots of different staff right across mm-hmm the uh, Faculty of Business and Hospitality very soon. So thanks to everybody for watching this morning and we'll talk to you all very soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye, Dan. Thank you.